Perfect. All right, well, hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to hop on here today mostly to test my equipment, um, but also just to kind of discuss a little bit about the structure of the workshop and what you can expect and then uh, share some tips just to show you what you will kind of learn in the workshop. So I'll first discuss the structure and then um, share some tips with you all. So I decided to split the workshop into two sessions. The first one is going to focus exclusively on harp techniques. So I'll go through pretty much what I would go through with an adult student who has like a professional musical background and um, just introduce step by step sequentially um, how we approach the harp, what the hand position is like, how we make sound, and all the little things to consider. And I want to be able to offer this in a more sequential manner than I'm able to do on you know Instagram and YouTube. Um, so you can kind of understand more of the context behind all the rules that we have. Um, so when I talk about directional placing, I want you to be able to understand what we mean by that and how to actually integrate that into your writing. And I just want to make sure it's actually going here. Good. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I'm Facebook Live is sometimes a little bit confusing. Um, so that's going to be session one. We'll go through just like the setup, the posture, um, how we play the harp. We'll go through and introduce um, our position for just playing one finger, playing two fingers, how we add on all the other fingers, what actually goes into making uh, the sound on the harp. The second session um, is going to be the next day at the same time, and that'll be cover all the extended techniques. So we'll discuss um, PTLT, playing down at the soundboard, we'll discuss harmonics, um, and then some of the special effects. And then the big thing is going to be what you need to keep in mind when you're writing uh, these extended techniques. Um, how much time does it take to switch between normal playing to PDLT to doing pedal slides and all that other sort of stuff. Um, it's not just a challenge of doing the techniques themselves. The biggest challenge most of the time with this extended techniques is the overall context. Um, so that's the big thing we're going to focus on in the second session. And then that session, I'll make sure I save some extra time for questions and answers for the live audience. Um, so make sure you bring those to the session. If you can only attend one of them, or if you're planning on catching the replays, you're more than welcome to send questions in advance, and I'll make sure I address those in the workshop as well. So, and then if you're watching this and you have any questions, you're welcome to drop them here, or you're also welcome to um, send me questions afterward. Uh, and then I will definitely be offering the replays. I know not everyone can join live with time differences and all of that. Um, so I will be, I have two cameras set up right now. One of them is offering the live stream um, and that I'll, I'll be using that for Zoom. The other one's recording, so I don't want to just give you guys a Zoom quality recording. I want to actually have something a little bit better for you all. And then the other thing is for everyone who buys both sessions, I'm going to put together a pedal video so you can kind of see with the setup, you can't see the pedals on the harp. There's not really a good way around that for zoom conferences just because I can't change camera angles midway very easily. So I'm going to put together a separate video that's pre-recorded, pre-edited, so you can actually see how I'm set up, how I do the pedal technique, what the pedals are, what it looks like, and then you can use that um, to keep in mind as you're writing for the harp to know, you know what pedals can be changed at the same time, what can't, what factors do I need to take into consideration when writing pedal changes, when writing extended techniques that factor in pedal changes like you know, pedal slides and all that sort of stuff. So that'll be a separate video that's included in the workshop um, as a recording. So I just want to now jump on. So what I'm going to talk about today as kind of like the mini lecture is placing on the harp and why that's important. So on the piano, when we're playing, you're really just going to be like dropping your fingers down. You're working with gravity and you have a lot of finger independence to be able to change directions, change patterns, and the harp is a little bit different in that regard. So your position is going to be sideways, and you're closing the fingers like this. And if you experiment with this, you can try this right now. Um, try wiggling your fingers like this, try wiggling them like this, and it's, you can note, tell it's a little bit slower. Um, 
Also, for piano, you're able to play with a really light motion. On the harp, your motion's a lot bigger um, because you have to have a little bit more of a follow through since you're actually pulling the string rather than just hitting a key. So the reason that we talk about placing is to be able to play the notes detached, which um, isn't our norm, but something like this is a lot slower than placing all the notes in advance and playing them. So just to be able to get the stability, the strength to be able to play, having the foundation of placing really makes that a lot more efficient. But when we're placing, it's really hard to change direction. So if I was going to say play F, C, B, A, I would want to only place the fingers that are gonna be going up and then place the finger going down. So that's why harpists really like having notes that all go the same direction in a passage so then we can only place those notes that are going in one direction. So we call that directional placing, but that's really rooted in that we have to place on the strings on the harp before we play. Um, so when you're playing really fast passages, keep in mind that the directions really make a difference um, so we can actually pre-place those notes. So if you're watching, let me know if that makes sense. You're also welcome to um, send questions again afterward. And then the other thing I was going to discuss is PTLT, so playing down at the soundboard. And this is fits in the extended techniques category um, where we're playing, you can hear the difference in sound from playing in the middle versus playing at the bottom of the harp. So when we're playing down at the bottom, it's actually quite difficult to get the thumb low enough down. You'll probably hear harpists talking a lot about thumb up. We need to have your know, thumb up if you've ever taken harp lessons. That's probably the biggest, most consistent comment you've gotten during the first several lessons is thumb high. Um, and that's just because we need enough room to close. Now, to be able to play low down on the soundboard, we're actually playing right at the board. So we can't have the thumb high, obviously. So we tend to only play fingers two, three, and four for PDLT, unless we have a larger interval where we would play the thumb higher, but it just, it doesn't work quite so well. So if you want a true PDLT, stick with groups of three. You also kind of want to stick to the notes a little bit closer together. It's incrementally harder to pull the strings just because we don't quite have the same bounce as we do um, in the middle of the string as we do down at the bottom. So your expectations, you'll want to have them slightly slower than you would in the middle of the string. And then as far as switching between the two, it does take a little bit of time. So if I was going to play... there's going to inevitably need to be a little bit of gap. So we can't quite seamlessly go from normal playing down to PDLT. Um, so that's another factor um, to keep in mind, make sure that there is time for that um, to be switching between the two. So let me know if that makes sense, if that's helpful. Um, feel free to leave a comment and ask questions later. And if you have any other questions about the workshop, you're more than welcome to contact me and I really want to make this a helpful experience for you all just to give you a little bit of more context behind you know, all the little tips I'm sharing on Instagram. I know sometimes it is a little bit confusing when you just have all these little things, you know, harpists don't like rests or the harp's not like the piano or watch out for directional placing. I want to give you the context and the perspective of why we have all these preferences and little rules behind the harp. So, um, you can register, you can go to my website, daniellekuntz.com. I also have the link, I'll add the link to the comments. Um, you can read more, and then as always, if you have questions, feel free to let me know. So thank you, I hope to see a lot of you all next week.